What's up guys, welcome back to Sweeviver. This is how Digital Combat Simulator was running on my RTX 2080 Ti last weekend. And now this is how Digital Combat Simulator is running on the same GPU with the same graphical settings by just doing some very very weird tweak. Guys what I'm about to show you in this video will improve your performance in Digital Combat Simulator specifically on a Pimax VR headset by more than 30%. Does it sound interesting to you? Guys stay tuned and I'll tell you all about it. Before we start up a big thing Thanks to all my lovely Patreon supporters and a special thanks to my official sponsors on Patreon, Commander Darklight, Art Armin and VR Ambassador. So what I'm about to show you is simply not possible to explain. This is a glitch, this is something that I just realized today by just clicking some buttons. I cannot really explain what's really giving me that performance boost, but I will lead you step by step how I did it and how I got it running this way. Alright, I think it's better if I just go step by step here. I'm going to show you how I'm importing and starting off DZS World 2.5 with the PyTool My Games launcher natively in VR without Steam VR running. It's very important because you cannot get the same performance while running DZS World 2.5 within Steam VR. So first off, we are in PyTool here. I'm using the Pimax 8K headset with maximum refresh rate of 80 Hz. I'm going to use the latest. PyTool version, the beta version 129 and in the HMD tab there's only one important settings here is the render quality. I'm going to keep it on 1.0. The rest is just for the image. I have uh, decreased the brightness a little bit and increased the contrast just to get some better colors and the black levels. Okay, so in the brain warp tab I'm not going to use smart smoothing. I'm not going to use the fixed foveated rendering either and I'm not going to have the compatible with parallel projections on either because it's not needed when you run Digital Combat Simulator 2.5 natively without Steam VR. Also, uh, the compatible with Vive only game is not checked here either, it's not needed. The field of view, I'm gonna leave it at normal as always, and the refresh rate is the maximum 80 Hz on the Pimax 8K. So let's go into the My Games launcher. I have already now imported the uh, Digital Combat Simulator here. I'm gonna just remove it just to show you how I'm doing this actually. First off you're gonna see all your games if you go here to the all game but if you go import you're gonna only see your imported, your manually imported games. So let's go into import and uh, I'm right away already in the directory of my Digital Combat Simulator installation. This is the main folder. Let's go into the binary or binary folder and click on the dcs.exe or the executable file for the Digital Combat Simulator. Open it up and it's gonna get imported into PyTool. Import success, just confirm. So now we can basically start off this simulator. So let's do it now. Uh, sometimes it takes up to even one minute before it starts. I'm not sure why it takes so much time. So let's fast forward a little bit. So it took some time until it started up, but now we are here. Uh, before we jump into any random free flight or whatever, let's go into the options and I'm going to show you the settings or the system options that I have been using during this test. Uh, there's some high, there's some medium, uh, basically the same settings that I've been using uh, through my past videos about Digital Combat Simulator. I'm using 3 vis three's visibility at 80%, no clutter grass actually, anisotrophic filtering at 4 and also in VR tab I lowered down the pixel density to 1.2 only. Uh, I had it on 1.4 last time I did the video about smart smoothing. I lowered down just a little bit but that's just to improve the performance slightly. I'm gonna show you why anyway. So yes, here are the settings and uh, let's just go into instant action. We're gonna take just the FA-18 Hornet, my best airplane that I have I think. And uh, let's do a free flight in the Caucasus map. Okay, so we're in the flight. I'm gonna start it off right away. I'm sorry if the camera is a little bit shaky. I'm actually not wearing the headset above my face. I'm having it just on my head just to see the... Uh, mirror or monitor view just to be able to show you what I'm about to do here. Uh, let's focus on the refresh rate first of all, the frames per second counter in the top right corner. It shows us about 
55, 56, 57, maybe up to 60 frames per second. This is basically how Digital Combat Simulator has been running on my RTX 2080 Ti with the provided settings I just showed you. It is playable, of course, you can use smart smoothing if you want to lock it at 40 frames per second and it's gonna be totally fine. And yeah, sure, but there is more we can gain here. Uh, I'm gonna tab out here and uh, have a, let's have a look first at the cam application I have in the left top corner. I see my Intel i9 9900K processor, it's overclocked to 5 gigahertz. It's running right now at 15%, uh, well that's totally, or 13%. Uh, let's see a per core over here. We have a per core usage of uh, maybe 10 to 15 percent per core. It's very different per core. Here's 35. This is basically because Digital Combat Simulator is running with one core only and uh, Windows is hyper-treating uh, so it's offloading the core and spreading out that uh, process around all uh, eight cores. So you cannot even see all eight cores but here are the two last cores. So yeah, this is the CPU and uh, down here we have the GPU. Right now it's at 60 degrees, but that's because I also have the fans quite high up on 61%. Uh, but we, what we're going to look at here is the well usage or uh, utility of the, of the GPU. It's up on 66 or 65%. That's the how much the GPU is being used by this simulator at this moment while I'm running it. The clock speed is at 2055 MHz and I have overclocked this GPU quite maximally. I could probably go a little bit higher on the clocks but I stay at 100 MHz extra. Also the memory is overclocked with 300 MHz. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a good overclock anyway. The power limit is set to 110 percent and uh, we also have the voltage to 100 uh, percent. I'm not going to go into any details how this works. Anyway, the fans are on 61 percent, that's why we get quite an okay temperature on the uh, GPU anyway. So, uh, with these settings, with my maxed out RTX 2080 Ti right now, we're getting less than 60 frames per second, around 55. What I'm gonna do is something very, very weird right now. Do not ask me why this happens, why this works, how it even works, but for some weird reason it actually works. So uh, look at the EVGA Precision X1 software. What I'm about to do is to click on default. This is something you probably may never do while running Digital Combat Simulator. I mean, meanwhile they have the simulator on. Let me click on the default and let's see what happens. What just happened? Suddenly we have a frame rate of 79, 78 frames per second, 80 frames per second and look at the GPU usage. It's suddenly at 95%. It's totally utilized right now. Suddenly that jump just happened, as you can see here in the cam software on the left left top side. Uh, as I clicked on default, it just jumped up. The default setting is there just to default every, all the settings on the Precision X software. Um, when I'm not even having this Precision X uh, software uh, installed on my computer, I have the frame rate of around 55 to 60 frames per second. With this software on default or any other settings, I have the same 55 to 60 frames per second uh, until I click the default. Sometimes once, sometimes twice, sometimes like three or four times it just happens. When I click on it, look at the frame rate counter, it just goes down and suddenly it just starts to go up. Now we actually got a frame drop a little bit because we're arriving to a city here. There are more buildings of course so it's getting more GPU demanding. But what we have not done here is to overclock the CPU. We're running it at 1950 megahertz. What I'm gonna do now is to load my fifth profile here. Click on load and let's see what happens. Uh, now the GPU is running at 2040 megahertz with the uh, 300 overclock on the memory, we have full voltage and full power limit. And suddenly we climbed up again to, well, maybe 77 up to 80 frames per second and it's fully stable. 
This is very, very weird, and this is actually something that works every time, but we, you have to do it while you are in, in, well, in flight already. I'm just gonna jump into the flight for a second, and I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna fly around a little bit, move my head a little bit. There are some uh, frame loss, actually, it's not super, 80, uh, super f smooth 80% uh, or 80 frames per second frame rate, but it's still really, really smooth. And there is, of course, no ghosting whatsoever because it's not reprojecting the image at all. Uh, it's full frame rate. There is no judder as far as I can see. The image is perfectly sharp, just as I'm used to. There's like no uh, explanation to this, how this could happen. Well, my only explanation could be that this simulator actually was not utilizing the GPU enough and suddenly it is. And if I just take off my headset again and just look, first of all, we have the same clock as before, right? We have the same power, we have everything the, the same. But look at the GPU utilization. Sometimes it's actually reaching 97, 98%, but depending on where you are, which scenery you have loaded. And yes, it's just crazy. The CPU is actually a, a little bit higher now, but it's not much, maybe 10% or 15% or something like that. And remember, I'm actually recording this with OBS at the same time, and I'm running this through the CPU and not the GPU, because we have quite a low utilization on the CPU, while we have a very high utilization of the GPU. That's why I'm recording with my CPU instead. So yes, guys, this is quite crazy. Uh, I'm just gonna load another scenery and just show you that it actually works in other places as well. Give me a second. Okay, so I started off another free flight uh, and I'm using the Su-25T aircraft right now. I know that free flights are not so demanding as some missions, but still, I have an aircraft in front of me, as you can see over there on the left side. And as you can see on the frame rate counter, we are at 60 frames per second. Uh, so this means what, when I get back to the main menu and then start off a new flight, it just resetted itself. That glitch just, just stopped working suddenly. So uh, before we do anything more, I'm just gonna alt tab back and uh, to the EVGA Precision X software. As you can see, we are still overclocked to the max. Everything is supposed to be running at full speed, but it's not. We have a 65% of a GPU utilization and the CPU utilization is kind of the same as always, like 15% or something. Let's see what happens if I click on the default button down here on the EVGA Precision X1 software. One click, it's sometimes not enough, but this time it is. Sometimes you have to click like two or three times, but look what just happened with the utilization. It's at 92. Well, around 90% in utilization. We have a full frame rate of uh, 80 frames per second on the 8K. Of course, we we're limited limited to 8K uh, or to 80 frames per second, and we are not even overclocked at this moment. So I'm gonna load up the fifth profile again in the Precision X software. There we go, the fans go up, the clocks go up on the memory, on the clock to 100, to above 2055 megahertz. And now we're actually fully stable at 80 frames per second. I'm just gonna put on the headset for a second and I'm just gonna show you. I'm sitting a little bit off, I know that, but it, this video is just to show you that it actually works. And it's just totally smooth. There's like, well, the ghosting I was talking about in the, my last video about motion smoothing is totally gone, of course, because there is no mo uh, reprojection going on, there is no smoothing going on, it's just smooth. And the quality or the image is the same as it was in my last video. Fully readable cockpit, everything with those settings, of course you can make it much more sharp, but still, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's amazing that you can get a simulator like this fully running in 80 frames per second. I have so far not tried it on the 5K+, Plus, and I'm not actually sure if we are able to reach 90 frames per second um, stable. At least 80 frames per second is fully stable. I, it just feels like perfect frame rate, which, which it is, of course. So yes, uh, I'm not sure how much I really need to show you of this uh, flight or... Uh, uh, I just wanted to point out 
that there's definitely something wrong with either the rendering pipeline of Pipemax or the utilization of the G RTX graphic cards or maybe it's the Digital Combat Simulator itself. Have in mind, we're not running this simulator through SteamVR, we're only running it natively through PyTool uh, Game Launcher. So this performance that you get, 80 frames per second, is not even possible to get uh, in SteamVR. There's like no effect at all doing the same thing in SteamVR. So it's really weird. There's just something going on and by uh, applying this, by just clicking this button, you get a full utilization. Well, almost. This is actually lower now, right now, probably because this scenery is not so super, super dense. And so, but it's still super, super smooth. It's crazy. And uh, last, last thing before we quit this video, I'm just going to show you a more, little bit more heavy scenery uh, and see how this looks. Okay, so I've loaded up the Persian Gulf map instead, also a free flight only, and of course a mission with a lot of aircrafts would have been more demanding, but let's just keep it as a free flight. Let's click on fly and let's see the frame rate we have. I have the GPU not clocked at all at this moment. I'm just going to stabilize the aircraft before I do anything more. And as you can see, I have a frame rate of around 50 frames per second right now. Uh, I'm not looking in VR right now, this is why it may look a little bit weird. Anyway, I'm gonna Alt tab here and have a look at Precision X1 software once again. We have not even down, uh, overclocked anything. Let's click on the default again, even though it is on default settings right now. Let's click on the default, see what happens. Look at this, 69. Well, it's not as huge as we are used to before. But still, it just jumped. Now it's at 70 frames per second. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is to also uh, load my fifth profile and maximum overclock my RTX 2080 Ti and see if it really helps. It doesn't really help much. As you can see, we gain like one frame per second or something. So we're running this simulator in 70 frames per second instead of 50. It's not fully smooth, of course. But it's really not far off. It's really running great anyway. Let me just check. Now I'm at, at least in VR. And it's of course, I mean 70 frames per second is of course much smoother than uh, 50 frames per second. Yeah, I mean it's, it's fully playable. It's a little bit jittery of course, because we have, uh, I mean it's not smooth 80 frames per second. Uh, of course, we are in the most demanding scenery uh, uh, of, of them all in a uh, digital combat simulator. So this is not going to be a fully smooth story. But anyway, we went from, uh, was it around 50 something frames per second to 70 something. Let me just check. I'm going to take off my headset again. Well, now we're down to 64. Anyway, this is quite crazy. I have to say this really, really does magic and uh, even though we have not the same utilization here we're only at 84 percent but it's still much higher than we had before in uh, my other videos for example you can check my other videos i did in the past i had like 60 70 percent maximum ut of a gpu utilization now we're at maybe at least 18 now it's in 92 percent as you can see 92% of GPU utilization and as we're starting to fly away from Dubai, we're getting a full frame rate of course. So yes, guys, uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this, uh, how this is possible, what's wrong with this software, what's wrong with this simulator, what is really going on when I'm clicking the default button, I really want to know this, I've been struggling, I've been really struggling to learn about this the whole day today, but I, I really cannot get... Uh, smarter. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. A big thanks to all my Patreon supporters, just like always, and also a, an even bigger thanks to my official sponsors from Patreon, Commander Darklight, Art Armin, and VR Ambassador. I'm sorry this video was not really edited, but I just need to get it out, because I think it's quite a cool thing. Guys, take care. See you in my next video. Cheers!